let's do a physics problem. So this is a momentum slash energy problem, and I thought it was pretty good. This is from uh, John Batista, fifth edition. Here's the problem. It's in chapter 7, number 99. I'll explain it to you, though. You don't need the book. I drew a picture. So we have two clay balls, uh, ball A and ball B, and ball B is hanging right there. Ball A swings down and hits it, and they stick together. And after they stick together, the two swing up some new height. So this starts at a height H, and we'll call this H2. How high do they go afterwards? Now, I mean, you could do this as a pendulum problem with an angle and a length, but they just gave you the starting height H. They also said mass A is half the mass B. So I'm actually going to call this M, and this is 2M. Mass A is mass B over 2, right, 2M. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so it's a collision problem. I need to know the velocity of this right before it collides, and I need to know the velocity of after it collides, and then find out how high it went. So first, it's a work energy problem, because I'm dealing with this at position 1. Let's call this position 1, position 2, and then we'll call this position 3, and then position 4. So 1, let's just put a little label here. Starting ball, starting ball A, two, just before collision. And you know, you don't have to label it the same way. Um, I'm just trying to keep it all straight. Three, just after collision, not just, just after collision. Four, swing up. There's an eye in there. Look at that eye. Swing up. Okay, so let's do part one. Just uh, part one to part two, we'll do work energy. And then two to three will be momentum. And then three to four will be work energy. Okay, so the first one, work energy. Work is the change in energy. Now, I want to pick my system. It's going to be, I can say both balls if I want. Uh, A plus B plus Earth. Now, why do I include Earth in the system? Well, what forces are acting on this ball as it goes from 1 to 2? There's the downward gravitational force, and then there's the tension in the string. Now, I can do the work done by the tension. Remember, work is F delta R cosine theta. And everywhere along this path, delta R and the tension are perpendicular, so cosine theta is 0. So the work done by the tension going down here is 0. What about the work done by gravity? Well, that's straight down, so that angle is not so easy to calculate, right? Well, you could calculate it, but it's not constant. So it's not trivial to find the work done by gravity along that path. Now I can get around that by saying the Earth is part of my system, and that's an internal force. If that's the case, then I have a change in gravitational potential energy, or potential energy is mgy. So that's a better way to do it. If you don't do this, you're just causing yourself a bunch of, of heartache. Okay. Now, if I do want potential energy, mgy, I need to set where is y equal to 0. So I'm going to put y equals 0 down here. That means work is 0, right? Because there's only two forces. Tension does no work. Gravity is part of the system. And that's going to be the change in kinetic energy of ball A plus the change in gravitational potential. And I can write that as 0 k2 minus k1 plus u2 minus u1. So k is 1 half mv squared. That's kinetic energy. Now, I, I can put in my values here, but I don't even need to do that because I can. some of these are 0. If it starts from rest right here, the initial kinetic energy is 0. And down here, it's at y equals 0, so the potential is 0. So I have 0 equals 1 half mv squared. 2 squared, that's the velocity at point 2, which is just before the collision, minus mgy1, which is h. So I'm going to solve this for v2. v2 equals, I guess you do it all one time, 
one should not. V2 squared is MGH. The mass cancels. V2 equals 2GH, V2 squared. V2 is the square root of 2GH. So that's that right there. Okay, great. Oh, I bent my paper. Where did I put the rest of my paper? I had a bunch of paper. There it is. Sorry. Technical error. Okay. So V2 is the square root of 2GH. Got it. Now for the collision. And this will be going from point 2 to point 3. Right, right before the collision to right after the collision. So now I can just deal with it like this. Here's A, it's moving with the velocity V2 that way. Here's B, and then after the collision, they're stuck together. And they're moving some velocity V3. And I want to find that velocity V3. They're moving horizontally at this point, so there's no gravitational... Uh, the gravi then there's no net force in the y direction. There's a gravitational force pulling down, but the tension's pulling up. So there's no change in momentum in the y direction. The only force is the force between A pushing on B and B pushing back. So that means that the change in momentum has to be uh, zero. Momentum is conserved. This is an inelastic collision. So let's just say that the momentum before in the x direction is equal to the momentum after. So p total x initial is equal to p total x final. And they're only in the x direction, so I can write this down as the mass of A, which is just m, v2 plus the mass of B, 2m, times its velocity, 0, is equal to the sum of the masses, m plus 2m, times v3, which is the final velocity. And I want to find v3. Uh, that's pretty easy. V3 equals m over m plus 2m times V2. And I know V2. And then this I can actually simplify, right? I can write this as m over m plus 1 plus 2 V2. That is equal, the masses cancel, so I get V2 over 3. That's the velocity of the stuff afterwards. V3. That's V3, yeah, okay. Now if I want to, and I do, V3 is V2 over 3, but V2 is that, so it's going to be one-third the square root of 2, 2 G H. Now we're going to go from point 0.3 to point 0.4, and we're going to go back to the work energy, and let's just draw a picture, because now I have this, right? I have my two balls connected together. They're, they have some velocity V3, and then they're going to swing up some height H2. And I, I don't need the angle. I just want H2. So again, I'm going to use work as the change in energy and same system. A plus B plus Earth. And Y equals zero down here. Same thing. No work done on the system because, again, the tension is perpendicular to the path and gravity is part of the system. Zero is the change in kinetic energy. I'm going to include those as one object just to make it easier, plus the change in potential. Let's just start putting stuff in. K, this is K4, minus K3 down here. Remember I, the way I labeled it. If you said one and two, I would respect you for that. I wouldn't really even get upset. Plus U4. 4 minus u3. Now again, two of these things are zero. In this case, the kinetic energy right here is zero. It's going to swing to its highest point, so that's zero. And uh, this is zero. The potential at point three is zero. Zero equals one half. Now I have m plus 2m v3. That's right, v3 squared. Uh, no, it's minus, right, at the minus, plus m plus 2m times v, uh, h, what I call it, h2, which I should have called that h4, but now I feel dumb, and I don't want to, ch h4, 
for. That makes more sense. So the, the initial kinetic energy, the final potential, and I want to solve for H4. Uh, this, these mass, I can divide both sides by the mass, right? That's okay. So I get, oh, there's a G there too. I got thrown off by the H. H4 times G equals one half V3 squared. Now I can, I can divide by G and I need to put in my V3 squared, which is this. So I get H for the G, oh, H4 equals one over two G and then I'm going to put this in uh, one over nine. I got to square that two G H the G's cancel the twos cancel. I get H four equals one ninth H. And you'll notice if you want to think about this, going back to the picture, I mean, that seems kind of short and it's important to point out that the energy here is not the same as the energy there, right? Even though this has potential energy, no kinetic, potential energy, no kinetic, you think it swings down and would do that. But even though it's, a, you know, if you just think about the mass, the mass of these two things uh, increased by a factor of three, you would think that it would be a third as high, but it's a ninth as high. Because this is an inelastic collision right here, we lose energy in an inelastic collision. So there's some other type of energy, that thermal energy, uh, deformation energy, or something like that. But that's that. So that's the answer right there. Uh, I, do, I did try to make clay balls. I used Play-Doh, and they just, I couldn't get them to really collide very well. Still want to kind of do it, but uh, I have another method to do it that might work but maybe I won't do it. I think I might do this in Python because that would be kind of fun. Make this ball, ball collision stick together in Python using springs and stuff. Uh, that would just be fun. So there you go. Hopefully you find that useful. It's kind of a fun problem. There's no numbers. I like no numbers. The end.